as a winding boy, blaming everybody that you can blame. Breaking news, Ryan Garcia responds to Bernard Hopkins calling Oscar De La Hoya a man. The way he handled his knockout loss compared to Ryan, calling Ryan a whining boy like he was Thanos. The only matter I do not take seriously, boy, is you. The question is two-sided when it comes to, well, Ryan didn't get up, Oscar didn't get up, it was both body shots. That ain't the debate. The blame game and responsibility and ownership, that's the man. That was my question. The boy, hold up, hold up. That's the man in Oscar. And that's the boy in Ryan. Ooh. See, the boy and the man. We ain't talking about hair on your, you know what? We ain't talking about hair on your arm. That's proven. We talking about how do you handle a situation of this magnitude as a man <clears throat> or as a winding boy blaming everybody that you can blame. Ryan responded with, quote, I don't remember ever making excuses for my loss. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait a minute. I can't even let Ryan get a pass on this one. You can't be serious. I mean, from all of the excuses that he made, from the rehydration clause, to him being drained, to the weight, not being 100%, the mole in the camp, being injured before the fight, having a rib injury, and the list goes on and on and on. So I don't know what Ryan is talking about. He don't remember making excuses. Maybe Tank knocked out his memory when he dropped him, respectfully. But all I remember is Ryan making excuses before and after the fight. Nevertheless, to be continued, Ryan said, I just said that part of my team showed they didn't have loyalty. That has nothing to do with the fight, only with integrity. B-Hop trying to help Oscar. I never seen an attack on someone's own fighter by a promoter ever. End of the quote. Well, Ryan better do his research. He needs to do his homework on Bob Arum. How he was bashing Rigandia. Forget about Rigandia coming off a loss like Ryan. Rigandia, in fact, came off his biggest win back when he beat Donaire when Donaire was pound for pound number three. In return, Bob Arum was de-promoting Rigandia, saying things like, I don't know how I'm going to promote him. He's a boring fighter, so on and so forth. Even recently, Bob Arum did the same thing to Terrence Bud Crawford. Despite the fact that Bud Crawford, for the past 10 years, Crawford has stopped every single opponent on the highest level, except one. However, Bob Arum still bashed Crawford the same exact way he bashed Rigandia, even though they were coming off their biggest wins at the time, unlike Ryan who came off a knockout loss. That's why Crawford ended up suing Bob Arum. This ain't a coincidence. Crawford and Rigandia just happened to be on the coincidental list. So when you compare Oscar to Bob Arum, it's like comparing an ant to an elephant. Furthermore, Ryan ended up responding to the fans who was calling him out for making excuses after the fight, but claiming he didn't. Ryan said in response, you are dumb. Seriously. Now the boxing fans got at Ryan for making excuses about the weight, the rehydration clause, and the mole in the camp. That's when Ryan responded to Hamid Boxing with, quote, I'm just curious. Are you aware of how despicable you are? Like, do you know how hateful you are? Or is it something you just don't notice? Literally, you can see with your dark circles under your eyes how much evil thoughts you have. You need to work on yourself. End of the quote. Man, what the heck is Ryan talking about? How is it evil that someone is calling out your BS or your lies by quoting you? Ryan said he did not make any excuses. So this fan in particular, he pointed out the excuses Ryan made by quoting him. However, Ryan thinks is evil 
for someone to quote him. Why? Because that contradicted Ryan's current quote. His previous quote exposed his current quote. Ryan, I got bad news for you. That's not called evil. That's called the truth. That's called facts, which clearly Ryan is having a hard time facing reality, which is why Ryan never responded to Hamid Boxing quoting him. Instead, he said, you evil for quoting Ryan himself. Come on now. You got to make it make sense and you got to stop making excuses to make matters worse. Then claim you didn't make excuses. Like for real, what is Ryan talking about? Does he not know that the worst weapon in the world is a microphone and a camera? Ryan was on the bodybuilder channel, the guy who thought he could beat Devin Haney in a real fight, where Ryan was making excuses that he was drained, he felt weak. It's not hard, but it's Precise. methodical. It's yeah, smart. It's, really uh, it's just one of those shots that your body just wanted to do it and you can't. Like I'm looking is at it a breath thing, or is it just like a it's physical a, pain? It's, a, it's both. Like everything shutting down. You're like, uh, and I'm looking. I'm like, why can't I move? I, I like I couldn't really do anything. And I, I, I was everything was drained out of me already, though. I was like, imagine you being dehydrated, and on top of it, you get hit with the liver. It's gonna hurt even more. And you had already got smacked in the face. Yeah. So I was going through a lot at that moment, and I was just like. Today's not my day. I just knew that like my body's giving up on me. Like it's like bad. Just physically, I can't do anything. My mind, I can't. I told him like I hop, even in the back. I was like, dude, my legs feel weak. Everything feels weak. Even after that one. Yeah, because because they didn't let me rehydrate the right way. So when I was there, I was like, damn, my legs are weak. I, I'm hitting, but I don't feel strong. I'm like, dude, I'm in for some shit right now. I was like, let's go, <laughs> yo, shit. That's gotta be fucking frightening. Yo, you can imagine. I'm just like, but I'm like, that's out of my control now. I'm like, yeah, so I just psych myself out. I'm like, let's fucking go. And then when I heard him in the second, I'm like, all right, motherfucker, I'm going for it because I'm fucking, I'm weak. So I had to go for the jackpot. Oh, so it's like this tug of war where like you want to go hard, but you want it to be reserved, yeah. and then you went too far. So when I heard him, I'm like, all right, it's either I get his ass right now or later down the line, I know my body's gonna probably like die out on me. So I'm like, all right, <laughs> and I, I, boom, I just got hit. And I'm like. However, leading up to the fight, Ryan told the media, in fact, he told my reporter that he only gains 10 pounds after the weigh-in anyways, so he's going to be A-OK. -okay. So did his father, Henry. They said that the weight was not a problem. However, immediately after the fight, they were screaming out that they were weight drained and that Ryan felt weak. I've never seen my son gain more than 10 pounds, um, give or take. Not, I mean, I, I just, I, it, it's not an issue for him or me because I want him to gain at least nine pounds. I mean, that's good. And if you gain 10 pounds, that's good too. But he knows what it, what he's up against. He knows. And it's not like, you know, is he's going to forget or he's going to go over. No, I mean, we're all monitoring everything. But it's not going to be a factor for him. In fact, it's going to be good for him. <laughs> so, Have you ever felt uh, drained of, up and coming into a fight? Because this fight, you, you may have that experience since it's a catchweight and there's a rehydration course. All right. Uh, no, actually... I never felt that, but uh, I don't think it's going to be a problem because uh, I feel good. I, I don't like to gain that much weight anyways after the wins. So I, I, I pretty much walk around in the ring at 148, so 146 won't be too much different. Hey, Kimmy. Hey, for Ryan's last fight, he was originally scheduled to fight Fortuna at 135. Ryan wanted to fight at 135, but Fortuna wanted to fight at 140. So why do you think Ryan wants to fight you at a higher and heavier weight, but not Fortuna? Uh, I think he just want to fight. Um, I think he wanted to just be lazy and not not train as hard. When he fight at 35, he actually got to like work to make the weight. So I think he was just trying to like um, be lazy and then also probably think he got a better advantage at 140. Yeah, you and Ryan are both lightweights. So if Ryan accepted the fight. With you at 135, wouldn't there have been, would there have been no rehydration clause? Uh, you said, what I said, you and Ryan are both lightweights. If Ryan accepted to fight you at 135, would there have been? Nah. Okay. No, nah, it wouldn't have been. It just, he's trying to, I don't know, try to figure out, I mean, find a way to 
handsome advantage, so I get So, stop it. We got it on tape. With the facts being laid out, drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe below. And to be continued on the next episode of Ahi TV. Peace out. From an honest, like, perception of it, I, I didn't feel too good. I mean, I, I felt a little weak, you know, going into the ring. My legs didn't feel too much under me, but once the fight got going, you know, it kind of all came together. So I can't really put pin, pin that too much, you know what I mean? It is what it is. I signed the contract, and that's that.